For years, brewers have been trying to think outside the box, but now they're thinking inside the box. The donut box. For weeks, Glenn has been threatening to make me drink this stuff. Unfortunately, I think today is the day. Oh, it definitely is. He's Joe Sixpack, I'm Glenn Mack. Now we're at the Ship Bottom Blendery and Barrel House, all new in Swarthmore for What's Brewing. Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism Convention Board. Download the app. By Visit Bucks County. Travel the Bucks County Ale Trail. Check in digitally to five or more breweries to score a free t-shirt. Get your passport at visitbuckscounty.com. And by the Conchahawk and Brewing Company. Visit conchahawkandbrewing.com for the latest releases, location hours, menus, and online store. When you can actually see the craftsmanship that went into making something, you're transported back to a simpler time. There's nothing quite like the feeling of freedom that you get riding in the open cockpit of a biplane. Like the many Pennsylvania plein air artists who came before me, I found inspiration for my art in the hills and the valleys of Bucks County. Bucks County is my home. Bucks County is my home. And Bucks County is my home. Visit Bucks County, where a home feels like a getaway. Hey, and welcome to What's Brewing. He's Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Macknow. We're at an all new place. Our friend Robert Zarco has just opened Ship on a Brewing, a blendery and barrel house in Swarthmore. What's a blendery and we're barrel house? We'll find out more about that. But you know what's cool? Swarthmore used to be a dry town. Yes. So we're pioneers here drinking in Swarthmore. Delighted to be <laughs> doing so, as a matter of fact. All right, we always start with our beer swap. Actually, I'm going before our beer swap, I'm going to have a little hard cider. Not usual for me, but why would I have a hard cider? Tell me, Glenn, why uh, would you have a hard cider? Because <laughs> what we are doing today is donut beers or breakfast beers, whatever you want to do. This is our swap. And I brought you this one. This is Holy Donut Fresh Lemon Glaze Beer from Lone Pine Beer. It's out of Maine. They're starting to sell down here. This is a, it's a kettle sour. How about that? You ever have a sour donut beer? I've never had a sour donut beer. No, no. never. Well, here you go. Here, let me tell you about it. 7.5% crafted with lemon zest, lemon puree, lactose, vanilla, and lemon glazed potato donuts. They actually got the donuts in this thing. It, it's weird that it's sour, but it does taste like a donut. I think you got us some nice donuts to pair it yeah, with. Yeah, we got donuts across All the right. street. Here you go. I had a donut. Oh, sorry. There's the beer. It works. I will tell you, this is what they say about this beer from Lone Pine. It lures you in with its, oh, you know what? I like it. With its brilliant golden coloring and sense of sweet candied citrus peel, lemon meringue, it is lemon meringue, and marshmallow, bracingly right. tart, resembling lemon head candies. Uh, what do you got? Glenn, we've had actually donut beer before, and we hated it. It was that Sheets beer because it was so sweet. Yeah. The sourness in this really makes it very drinkable. We've had a few other. Ship Bottom makes a cider donut, ale, an ale which right, we've liked. Right. Um, Harpoon did a thing with Dunkin' Donuts, right. uh, I think on a regular basis. And Conchi Brewing, which I'm involved with, has a deal with Federal Donuts where right. we come out with their beer. So, All right, not so that rare, but you, you know, what is what I'm is more of a pancake guy, Glenn. <laughs> we <laughs> needed breakfast. that distinction, did we? Yes, exactly. This is Ellicottville Blueberry Maple Pancake Beer. Uh, you would almost think that it would be a stout, but it is a, it's actually a wheat beer. A little oh, yeah, darker. Look at than, that. Oh, yeah. And I've never had nice this before, so we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. This I is, smell the blueberry. I don't smell the maple. Definitely smell the blueberry. It tastes to me like... Weak beer that somebody poured blueberry syrup into. Yeah, not, yeah. Not, I'm not big on this one. I don't get pancakes at all on this one. No, it's I get awful. blueberry, and I get kind of a not a very strong beer. Yeah, it's okay. it's not awful, but it's not really notable yeah, either. Yeah, I'll stick with this one. I like this one. Um, so, I asked you, is donut beer a thing? And you kind of said, well, I don't know about that, but breakfast beer is a thing. Yeah, it totally is. You know, I did a, a check on... Uh, 
Beer Advocate, I think it was, and I just plugged the word breakfast in yeah. for beer search. There was over a thousand beers that have the word breakfast in well, them. Well, like a breakfast stout kind of thing? Yeah, or yeah. Okay. so breakfast stout is the one you would think of the most about it. But, you know, it did get me to thinking, you know, who actually drinks beer for breakfast? Besides I had, us. I, I, had, <laughs> I was going to say, I have in my, I've tailgated. Yep, absolutely. Early and had a beer, beer and tailgate. Right. So I guess that counts, right? Well, I think it does. We put out a poll on our Twitter, uh, to our Twitter followers, yes. that is. And uh, uh, I asked, have you ever had beer for breakfast? And about 60% of the people, 60, 40, said that they had had yeah, beer for they've, breakfast. They've lived in their lives. Yeah. I mean, First thing out of out in your bathrobe and out cracking up a beer. I've had beer for breakfast the night after. This is my youth, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, you have the night. You wake up. There's like, oh, there's this can of beer here. I never opened. I guess I'm gonna open this can of beer. Rumor has it that people do that. Cold piece of pizza, pizza yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Are there any good reasons that uh, somebody would do this? You came up with a list for God's sake. Yeah, I've come up with good reasons yeah. to drink beer and breakfast. My number one. I'm going to start right out with a big one. Is our founding fathers drank beer for breakfast? Is that right? It is absolutely that true. Ben Franklin was quite the booze bag. He, he was actually known as the water guy, though. He de he was the one who first discovered the value of drinking water instead of beer. Instead of or in addition to? Probably in addition to okay. it. But anyway, he, our founding fathers did it, but the second reason is Obama did it too. He was famously right? posed with a glass of wheat beer uh, during a German economic conference. Uh, yeah, hey, you actually I mean, got the, 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 the Obama I, look there. I respect <laughs> that. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, well, my, it's better than a mimosa. Yeah, I'm not big on yeah, that. You go to yeah. brunch, I'm, I'm not big on the mimosa. Well, I'll give you my best reason. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Oh, so <laughs> why not start the day right? Exactly. <laughs> there you go. All right. That's, that's good. By the way, there is a flip side to that, which we mentioned Federal Donuts. They make a donut with beer. Uh, there you they go. They use the is beer it? as a glaze in the donut uh, on the thing. So I would definitely try that. All right. Coming up. Where's that bottle? Where is it? Come on. Don't hide it from me. There it is. Uh, right I tried. I tried. There you go. Glenn, I tried. We asked our, our viewers a month or two ago, what's the worst thing you ever drank? This thing came in first. We hadn't tried it yet. Now we're going to. He's Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack now. We're at the Ship Bottom Blendery and Barrel House. I got it right that time. <laughs> there you go. Right next to the train station in Swarthmore for What's Brewing. You don't have to go away to get away. Go and explore. Find the small businesses that make where you live a community. When you dine, choose homemade. On a free weekend, discover the great outdoors. And if it's brewed here, enjoy it with friends. Support small for an experience you won't find anywhere else. Make it local, make it Main Street, make it Motco. Welcome back to What's Brewing with Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack now. We are at the Ship Bottom, the brand new place that they've just opened up in Swarthmore, right next to the train station, the, the uh, blendery and barrel, barrel house. house. Yes. Rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> I am drinking their Hop and Hazy New England IPA, one of my favorites. What do you got? Uh, this is the Mermaid Blonde Ale. Yeah. Uh, I love the glass. Uh, yeah. This is more of a summer beer, but really enjoyable. Why not? Okay, enjoy that because this part could be tough. We asked our um, viewers about a month ago, what's the worst thing you ever drank? And the thing that came back the most was this. This is Mal Jepsum's Malort Liqueur, um, which is out of Chicago. I don't know if it's out of Chicago, but it's a Chicago icon. Yeah, it's out, out of Chicago. Hell, I think, Glenn, from right. what I, we, our, our viewers described. And we had never it. had it. Somebody was nice enough, maybe nice enough, to send it to me. This is what it actually says on their website, Joe Sixpack. Not a drink for most people, but we're not most people. Most <laughs> first-time drinkers of Jepson's Malort reject our liquor. Its strong, sharp taste is not for everyone. One liquor, our liquor, is rugged and unrelenting, even brutal to the palate. <laughs> unrelenting, that's a great description for we found, anything you want to put in your mouth. We <laughs> found only one of 49 men will drink Jepson's Malort <laughs> after the first shock glass. So, take a sniff and tell me what you got there. Um, I, I get sort of um, a bit of 
Exxon Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, turpentine. Um, it's a rite of passage in Chicago. It's a hangover cure. It's to show that you're a man or I guess a woman. It's made out of wormwood. As you can see, I'm stalling here. Um, <laughs> Yum. Here's to you. You first. All right. I said I'm the one who. Glenn, are you still oh. with us? Yeah. It, um, <laughs> It starts out bad and gets, oh, that's the most bitter thing I've ever had. Go ahead. Also, just, well, you downed that puppy, didn't you? Just get it out of the way. Oh, man. You know, I thought I, I would get, it would go just go over yeah. the palate and not stop on along the way. That was, that's ooh. actually really, oh, that's awful. <laughs> this is really bad. You know, Glenn. <laughs> I gotta say, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Really? Yeah. Because it's pretty bad. I don't think I would drink it again, oh. but it's not. I thought it was gonna completely blow out. Well, actually, actually I spoke too <laughs> Hold soon. Hold that thought. <laughs> the marketing director for Jepsum's Malord, this is what he said. Malord tastes like baby aspirin wrapped in grapefruit peel, <laughs> bound with rubber bands, and then soaked in well gin. <laughs> Okay, you can, by the way, have it in cocktails to defray the horribleness of it. But uh, with all apologies, I'm glad to, we did it to yeah. ship bottom. I'm just going to use this to wash out my, my mouth here. I think the roof of my mouth is, is, is gone. All right, let's move on, if we may. <laughs> really? Uh, big anniversary for a, 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 a iconic brewer, is that fair to say? Well, a, a heritage brewery okay. is what I would call it. Uh, okay. They've been uh, yeah. straw brewing out in St. Mary, PA, out in the western part of the state. Hold on, I need to gargle with it. <laughs> Celebrating its 150th anniversary. I'm going to reach down here because I just realized we've got uh, bottles here. We need to get an opener somewhere. So Straw Brewing out in St. Mary, PA, is celebrating their 150th anniversary. They're the second oldest brewery in Pennsylvania behind you know who. Yingling. Is this right. like being the second most popular groundhog in Pennsylvania? <laughs> Maybe, because they're not nearly as big as, as Yingling. They're a very local brewery. Their beer is available in the Philadelphia area. They're known mainly for their lager and their amber. They also have a light beer, but they also make a lot of craft beers that you can find in some areas of the state. I'm not so sure how available it is in the, in the Philly area. Am I wrong to think I may have had this kind of when I was a young man in Buffalo, New York? They used to distribute. Right, they are. Out. They're up that way. They are way up there in that corner. Although I didn't like use Erie. These days, I th exactly. These yeah. days, I don't think they get out of oh, much geez. out of Pennsylvania or Ohio. I'm sorry. I'm poor. I'm still <laughs> tasting this thing. The problem with this is I don't think it. I don't think it goes away. <laughs> well, I think if, if you drink enough, it will. <laughs> if you drink enough of that, I'll go away. Glenn, let's try the. Uh, uh, this the, is the straw the blogger. Straw blogger here. All right, here's and to see. You. Good. Nice. Cheers. Founded in 1872 by Good Peter Straub. And, and they're, obviously, they're surviving because they're having their birthday. It is tough for some of those old ones to, uh, you know, to hang in there. This is the smallest brewery to emerge from Prohibition. I mean, it's, pretty, it's a remarkable okay. thing. Okay. Uh, they, they, they're family owned still. Um, they're still very, they're quite small. Uh, and it's de definitely one of those places that beer freaks love to make the journey to because they're way out in the middle of nowhere and they have something very, very famous at their brewery. Well, this is it. This is the thing. This is why I'm going. Yeah. The Eternal Tap. I love this. <laughs> Just like the fountain of youth? Exactly. It is Pennsylvania's fountain of youth. All right, Ponce de Leon, tell me what <laughs> there I get. You, go. you can go there anytime they're open. Uh, you can take a tour or not, but you can stop in uh, and get a couple free beers at the Eternal Tap. The only rule is you got to wash your own glass. Do you bring your own glass? No, they have them there for they you. They have them, but at the them. end, you, they want you to wash yeah, it. Okay. Yeah. I think more breweries should be doing this, I like actually. That. There you go. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Good for them. Congratulations. So, good beer. Yeah. Look around for it. The amber and the lager, and they also make a light beer here, too. All right. Coming up, we got some news from you. Some not good news. A longtime brewery in this town is closing, and we certainly feel badly about that. But this one is opening, and we're happy about that. The Ship Bottom Blendery and Barrel House in Swarthmore. Joe Sixpack, Len Mack now for What's Brewing.
Glenn Mack now here with Andrew Colligan from Conshohocken Brewing Company. Let's run down the new lineup of exciting beers, starting with Type A. Our number one selling beer, big citrus hop notes, a nice dry finish, the quintessential American IPA. Ring the bell Pilsner. And that's our fastest growing brand. It's a smooth, easy drinking Pilsner to enjoy during a game. Life Coach. Hazy, 100% citrus hop session IPA, the perfect beer for all day at the golf course or the pool. Puddlers Rope ESP. Ah, that's our multi roasty English pub ale, two silver medals at the World Beer Cup. Maybe the best English show in the country. MC5, my favorite. Double dry hopped IPA, it's all the juicy goodness you want in a hazy IPA. Philly Vice. It's our rotating series of fruited sours, light and easy drinking. Mr. Robusto. Ah, dark chocolatey porter, perfect dark beer for a cold winter's night. All exciting beers, enjoy them all and a whole lot more at Conshohocken Brewing Company's five PA locations and wherever fine beer is sold. Cheers. Hey, welcome back. Uh, it is What's Brewing. He's Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Macknow. We're at the Ship Bottom Barrel House and Blendery. A lot of bees there in Swarthmore. Previously a dry town. It was. Hey, uh, good for this. Yeah, really. What a great location, too. Right in the middle of a nice, quaint, walkable downtown. Yes, and I am enjoying the Barnegat Lager, one of my favorites. I think it's a year-round beer for them. It is. It Always is. Good. And this is the Swell Dorado IPA. It's their double dry hopped, double Hazy IPA, 8.5%. It doesn't seem like we ought to be trading here, I know, right? Exactly. I, I know you're a lager guy, I'm a hazy yeah. IPA guy. Okay, some not great news that uh, emerged recently. Manny Young Brewing, which had been around for a while, well, they're not exactly closing, but they're not yeah, making beer. They're not coming back as a brewery. They're just going to serve other people's beer. Uh, Manny Young Brewing was founded in 1996, which is like ancient times yeah, in craft beer it seems like. More than a 25 like. year run. Yeah, it was yeah. a great run too. Uh, it was an anchor at one end of Main Street in Maniunk. They survived at least, as I can recall, three major floods that completely blew them out there because they're right on the Schuylkill Canal. Yeah, the last one was bad. Yeah, and also, you know, a, frankly a murder that occurred there. So what finally did it for them? Well, I think it was a combination of that last flood, but also the pandemic. Business has been down for them. Uh, they deserve a lot of credit for hanging in there for so many years. And they're going to stay open as a restaurant, as a it is a, a uh, tappy, and, you know. Uh, they'll have they'll serving have other beers. They'll have decent beers there, but you know, Main Street does no no longer has a true brewery. There's a spot called Fat Lady that does have uh, local beers in it that are uh, from I think Bald Birds for the most part. They're not really a true brewery, but Maniac needs an actual real brewery in it. So. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. All right, some other news. Let's get to. Uh, other half out of New York, and I know we've had their beer and enjoyed it, but Interloper? Yeah, from Brooklyn. Uh, it's funny, they're moving into, or they have moved into the former brew pub where Goose Island was located in Fishtown. Yeah. They're going to give it a shot there. It's a 150 seat tap room, big spot. Uh, a lot of people like uh, Other Half. It's got a, it's a very yeah, popular know. brewery. No, I, and I like their beer. I just figure like you stay on your side of the street and we'll stay on ours. I always welcome new breweries opening up here, but, but New York, I, you know, <laughs> we want New York and stay stay, stay, your, yeah, stay yeah. in your own borough. Okay, well, good to them. All right, 2SP Again, another place we've enjoyed their beer. Over. Right, from Aston, they're opening up a tap room down in Chad's Ford. No brewing going on on site, but it's a good addition to the Chad's Ford area as well. Okay. Um, and, and go ahead. I was going to say one other uh, local spot has opened up a tap room, which is Ho uh, Human Robot, one of my favorites. Yeah. They've op they've moved into the Jenkintown Brew Pub that was formerly the home in the Chamonix Creek. Uh, they they've they'll be opening up the week that this uh, this broadcast airs. Okay, and not local, but I know an iconic brewer out of Oregon. Shutting down? Yeah. Uh, Hair of the Dog in Portland. It was absolutely one of my favorites. Uh, it was really introduced me to a lot of strong beers. Founder Alan Sprintz was a really popular guy in the whole American craft beer scene. Interestingly, he just decided to close it up rather than sell the brand. Interesting. All right. Hey, one of our great partners over our five seasons has been the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Many of you have toured throughout Montgomery County to visit their over 30 breweries and sample their beers. We've been to a lot of them. We encourage you to check out the newly renovated Valley Forge National Historic Park Visitor Center. 
They recently held a ribbon cutting ceremony. This brand new museum exhibition tells the history of the 1777-78 winter encampment and how the citizens of Pennsylvania worked to preserve the site. There are artifacts, interactive videos, and display panels. Our partners from the Valley Forge Tourism and Monco Makers encourage you to schedule a visit. Spring, weather, warmer, nice time to go. We thank them for partnering with us and helping us introduce many of the great breweries in Montgomery County. Yeah, cheers to Monco Makers. Cheers to Monco Makers. All right, coming up, we're going to talk to Robert Zarco, the impresario of this great place, Ship Bottom Barrel House and Blendery in Swarthmore. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack now. What's brewing? Welcome back to What's Brewing. We are at this great new place, and I've said the name wrong several times. So Robert Zarco, our friend, what's the name of this joint? Blendery and Barrel House. There you go, in Swarthmore, right near the train station. Great play, great addition to Swarthmore. Thank you. Which is kind of developing much more of a scene. Tell us about, like, why do you decide to open here? What's the impetus of this place? Well, I decided to open because my commute right now is an hour and 45 minutes You're down to the beach. You're talking about going to the place down the shore, yeah. Down yeah. The beach haven. Uh, this is much more convenient. It's eight minutes away. That's um, smart. Yeah, yeah, Open it's, it's a great. business in your well, you were selling from your driveway during the pandemic. Exactly, so. and then yeah. gas prices have gone up, so <laughs> I'm looking at that also. Good work. But uh, my wife and I decided to sell our house. We sold it a day. The original license for the uh, brewery in Pennsylvania was out of my garage. I looked up her and said, "I got to do some of this license because we're using it for distribution." Mm -hmm. Uh, we're at Ambler, we're at Lynn Villa, what am I going to do? And we found this perfect space in Swarthmore. It was an old realty office. It was nine different offices in here. There are a lot of challenges in a 100-year-old building. Uh, we got through. It took us from October to now. Uh, but we're opening this week, and I'm very excited to You can be do very that. well here. It's great I spot. hope so. I'm betting on it. Yeah. Yeah, you did a wonderful job in this space. I really encourage people to come out here because it's very comfortable. Uh, you have all of your beers that uh, Ship Bottom is known for, including Glenn's favorite, which is on draft I, here. I love your Mexican stout. You, you know that. We've talked That's about it. it my on favorite draft. beer of the years, and you have it on tap, which is unbelievably great. I'll be here a lot. Take the train down. We'll always be here. We'll <laughs> yeah. always have it on tap. So the thing is, Ship Bottom is not known yet for barrel aged beers. It's not, you know, you've been down the shore. I know, I, prob I guess you have done a couple barrel aged beers. Yeah, we, we do them, but we don't have a lot of space. Um, I always wanted to do a program. And when I was out in Denver, Colorado for the GABF, I was at Great Divide and I saw how they had their operation. They had a regular production brewery and then they had a barrel house. Uh, they would basically make their wort and then transfer it in a tanker uh, to their location. So the same idea here, we're gonna produce all our beer in Beach Haven, uh, or not beer at that po point, uh, wort, and then we'll basically transport it in a tank in a Sprinter van, a five barrel tank, and then ferment and age it. We'll have a cool ship outside in a shed um, to get some of the bugs in the air. All right, <laughs> so that's Brewhouse Blendery. Yeah, the Blendery part comes when we were aging the beers and then we put them in barrels, so we'll be doing a lot of stuff in oak barrels, uh, spirited barrels like tequila, bourbon, rum, and then when we get to different flavors, like the Mexican stout, we will do uh, bourbon and we might go over to a rum barrel and just get all these different flavors and nuances from the barrels. So, so we lay them down to sleep. You brought in actually a barrel expert yes. on this. Tell yep. us about her. Uh, Hannah Godey um, came in. I worked with her. She used to brew our beer at uh, Free Will when we used them for contracting. So I knew where uh, she's really smart, brilliant. Uh, artists with the beers bring a lot. I was very excited to have the opportunity to bring her in for this project. This is something I always wanted to do, but we didn't have the space. And now with the location, like I said, it's very convenient for me. And with the beach, we're very transactional um, when we produce. And then also with our clientele, it just moves so fast. This space was really designed to focus on the beer, uh, the aromas, the smell, the glass, where everything we do, we want people to sit down and really focus on what we're doing and we're going to tell the story on right. down the shore hello i'm drinking i'm going to the beach here savor the magnificence <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah down there most people say what do you have similar to coors light we have to educate oh, people on beer really yeah uh, so okay. now this is different where people come in and we have the people that know the beer and, and enjoy the beer okay well that's good 
Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, it's, it's great that you brought in an expert because it, the whole idea of, of aging beers in barrels, it's, you know, you think about just throwing the beer on the wood, but it does, there is an expertise involved in that. Exactly. And she's been doing it for years with Sours and Saisons, barrel aged stouts. So we're going to bring that under our portfolio and do a lot of those beers. Uh, because it's a smaller batch, I'm going to jump in and start brewing at times. I'm sick of cleaning up all the issues and, yeah. and paying all the bills. Yeah, you, I you, start you got into fun. it because you like making beer. Right. Exactly. All right, Robert Zarco, people want to find all of your places. Let's see, you got Beach Haven. Yes, sir. Open 12 months a year. Yes. Okay, right across the street from the water. Mm -hmm. uh, when is Lynn Villa? Lynn Villa will open uh, early April and same with uh, Ambler. Okay. So those two locations are outside locations. One's at Lynn Villa Orchards, the other one's at a coffee shop in Ambler, and this will be open all year. This is great. We've hit all the spots, Glenn. We've hit every yeah, one, exactly. and I got news. You open any more, we're there. Any place where they have the Mexican stout, I'm telling you, you should go and get it. And we'll um, barrel age that for you, too. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, I'm in for that. Yeah. And you've agreed to host our party. Yes, sir. Which amazingly starts next week. And you'll see us there next week. Robert Zarco, thanks for having us. Thank you. Joe Sixpack, I'll see you next week at the party. Cheers. Everybody, thanks for watching this episode of What's Brewing. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism Convention Board. Download the app. By Visit Bucks County, travel the Bucks County Ale Trail. Check in digitally to five or more breweries to score a free t-shirt. Get your passport at visitbuckscounty.com. And by the Contra Hawk and Brewing Company, Visit ConchaHawkandBrewing.com for the latest releases, location hours, menus, and online store.